Hello everyone. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to download and install Windows 11 onto a Mac with an Apple chip, which is an M1, M2, M3, or an M4, or an Intel chip for entirely free. There's no need for parallels or VirtualBox. We're going to be using a different method with a tool called UTM. And by the end of the video, you'll have Windows 11 running smoothly on your Mac, just like it would on a Windows PC. So the first thing we want to do is navigate to the very top left of your screen and press the Apple logo. And then we want to press about this Mac. This is to see what chip your computer has. As you can see, I have the Apple M1 Pro. You may have the M2 or M3, etc. Or you might have an Intel chip. This is important to remember for later in the tutorial. So once you know what type of chip you have, we want to go to UTM's website. Go to mac.getutm.app. I'm going to have them linked in the description. So on this website, we can download UTM. You can also download it on the Mac App Store. However, it costs money on there, so I recommend just downloading it on the website. So just press the download button. Once you have UTM downloaded, just navigate to where you downloaded it and open the file. Then just drag the utm.app into your applications folder. As you can see, I already have UTM installed, so I get this error. So I'm just going to stop this. So once UTM is in your applications folder, just double click to run it. Once we have UTM open, the next thing we have to do is download the actual Windows 11 software. So to do this, we're going to be using Crystal Fetch. I'm going to have a link for Crystal Fetch in the second link of the description. As you can see, once you click the link, it's going to navigate you to the official Apple App Store. Once it's open, just press the Get button and then press Install. Once it's downloaded, just open Crystal Fetch. So once you're in Crystal Fetch, you can either select Windows 11 or Windows 10. I'm going to be downloading Windows 11. Then we want to select the correct architecture. Now remember when we checked the chip at the start of the video. If you had an Intel chip, you want to select Intel. However, I have an M1 Pro, so I'm going to be selecting Apple Silicon. If your chip begins with the letter M, you must pick Apple Silicon also. Then you can select your language. I'm just going to pick English United Kingdom and then your edition. And I'm just going to select normal Windows 11, which is perfect for what I need. So once you've selected all the correct settings, just press download in the bottom right hand of the window. We need to agree to the Microsoft software license terms. So you can read this yourself. And if you agree, just press accept. Depending on the speed of your internet, this might take a while to download. So I'm just going to cut to when it's done. So once the ISO image is fully downloaded, you can select where you want to store it. So I'm just going to store it in my recording folder. However, you can do it anywhere you like. So once you've decided where you want to store it, just press the move button. So now it's downloaded, let's create the virtual machine in UTM. So firstly, we just want to press create new virtual machine, then choose virtualize and, and then press windows. We want to make sure the box install windows 10 or higher is checked. And we want to check that import VHDX image is unchecked. Then under boot ISO image path, we just want to press browse and navigate to the ISO file that we downloaded using crystal fetch. So once you select it, just press open. We want to just check that install drivers and spice tools is checked and then just press continue. So now you want to select how much memory you want to allocate to the virtual machine. I'm just going to go with four gigabytes. However, if you're doing more intensive tasks, you might want to bump this up to eight gigabytes, but just bear in mind that you want to make sure you have enough RAM on your MacBook. Once again, you can just go up to about this Mac to check. So as you can see on my Mac, I have 16 gigabytes. So I probably could get away with allocating eight gigabytes of memory to this virtual machine. However, I'm just going to stick it to four. I'm also just going to keep CPU cores to default. However, you can just select this manually if you like. So then just press continue. So now we're specifying the size of the drive that our Windows virtual machine will have. So this is essentially how much storage your virtual machine will have. I'm just going to stick to the default 64 gigabytes because I think it will be enough for what I'm doing. So then just press continue. If you like, you can make a shared directory, which is essentially a folder, which your normal operating system and your virtual machine can access. However, I'm not gonna set one of these up. So just press continue. Finally, we can name our virtual machine. So I'm just gonna call this Windows Tutorial VM, which stands for virtual machine, and then press save. So now you've set up your virtual machine, you can see it on the left-hand side, as well as other virtual machines you've set up. So as you can see, I have set up some Linux virtual machines in the past. So then once you're ready, just press the play button beside the virtual machine you created. 
so it wants you to press any key, so I'm just going to press space, and then it will allow you navigate through the Windows 11 setup steps. So for the language, I'm just going to stick with English United Kingdom, as well as the time and currency format. Then just press next. So for the keyboard or input method, I'm going to do United States because that's the type of keyboard I have on my MacBook. So then just press next. So we would like to install Windows 11, so we're going to keep this checked. We need to agree that everything will be deleted on our virtual drive. However, this doesn't matter as we have just created it and we know nothing is on it. So just check this and press next. When it asks for a product key, you can enter one if you want to purchase it from Microsoft's website, or you can just press I don't have a product key here. We need to select the image we want to install, so I'm happy to install Windows 11 Home. However, you can select a different operating system here if you like, and then just press next. You can go ahead and read the Windows 11 terms. I agree with these, so I'm just going to press accept. We need to select a location to install Windows 11. Here's the 64 gigabyte drive we created, so I just want to select this and press next. Then once you're ready, just press install. This might take a little while, so I'm going to cut to when it's done. So once the installation is complete, we just want to make sure everything's shut, and we want to go down to the bottom and this CD slash DVD drive, where we have the ISO that we use to install Windows, we just want to press this little down arrow and press clear. But we do want to make sure that UTM guest tools latest.iso is still in the disk drive. So once you've done that, we can just press play again. So once you have Windows 11 open, you just have to finish the setup. So you just want to select your region, press yes. And then this is important, but you want to select the right keyboard layout. So I have a US keyboard, so I'm just going to find it here and then press yes. And then we want to hold the FN key on our laptop, hold the shift key and then press F10 and this will open the command prompt. We then just want to write the command OOBE backwards slash bypass NRO and then we just want to hit enter. This allows us to skip the network steps as we do not have the correct drivers. Then once again we can run through these steps so just select your region and press yes and then select your keyboard layout so I have a US keyboard so I'm just going to scroll down to US and press yes. And then I'm going to skip adding a second keyboard layout. And then I can press the button, I don't have internet. Now if we didn't type in that command, you wouldn't have access to this button. So you can enter a name for the device. So I'm just going to call this tutorial and then press next. And then a password, I don't want one, so I'm just going to press next. And then we can decide if we want to let Microsoft and apps use our location. So I'm just going to press no and press accept. And then I'm going to also say no to finding the device, just press accept. And I'm also going to say that only give required di diagnostic data to Microsoft and then press accept. Once again, I'm going to press no to improving inking and typing. And I'm going to press no to giving tailored experiences with diagnostic data. I'm going to press no to advertising ID. Once again, you can do your own uh, preferences for these, but I just prefer to not give Microsoft this data. So as you can see, we now have the Windows Virtual Machine running. The only issue with this is if we change the resolution, such as putting it into full screen, the quality will be really bad. So as you can see, this is super blurry and not really suitable for doing tasks on your computer. So I'm just going to make this small again. So to fix this, all we have to do is go to our file explorer and then navigate to the CD drive here. Then we just want to run UTM guest tools. So just press here and then we want to right click and then run as an administrator. We want to press yes when this window pops up. And then we want to go through this installer. So we're just going to press next and then we have the license agreement. So I'm just going to agree and then let this install. So once this installer is completed, we just want to reboot our virtual machine. So just make sure reboot now is checked and then press finish. So once your Windows machine has rebooted, as you can see, I can put this full screen and the resolution is still great. So now we have a fully functional Windows machine running on our Mac. I hope this video was useful. If it was, please leave a like or subscribe. Anyways, I'll see you in the next video.